In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to create a drawing in TechDraw. We're going to take a model and create a fully dimensioned drawing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a model that we can create a drawing of. So I'm just going to use my start macro. If you don't know how to use a start macro, look at some of the videos, you'll see the how to create your start macro. This allows you to get a part and a body made very quickly. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, from the sketch, I'm just going to sketch a part. It looks something like this. And I'm going to create a line from here to here. And this chamfer is really just so that we can see which way round the part is. I'm just going to cut those pieces off there. Close that. Pad that, pop it in the middle, and there it is. So that's going to be my part. I'm going to put a hole in it just so we can see where that is too. So I'm going to take another sketch and do it on this plane. And I am going to just quickly draw a hole. Draw it there for now. That'll do. Close that. I'm going to pocket that and it goes down five so it doesn't go all the way through. So that's perfect. So we'll go with that. That's our part. That's the thing we're going to draw. So now let's get on with the actual drawing part. So we're going to go on to tech draw. And in tech draw, we can create a new drawing sheet. So we're going to do that. I'm going to take it from the templates. You can do this default page or you can go to this one and select a template. I'm going to do that because I like the A3 size and I'm going to just pick any one of these A3 size uh, landscape drawings. There's my drawing and you'll see quickly in this uh, title block these green spots are where you can actually change things. So if I double click that green spot it pops up with the author name and I can just put uh, my name in there. And we are good, so I can give it a title. I'm just going to say model. And you can go through and change all of that. Now, of course, you could have a default page of your own that has a lot of this stuff already filled in. That's pretty easy to do, but we're not going to do that in this video. The next thing we need to do is have some views of our model. So we select our model and we select uh, add views. Okay, here the the one view I want to see is that top view. So that's where we're going to start from. And that's one thing with tech draw is whichever way, whichever, however you have the model oriented is the way it's going to show up in the drawing. So we're going to go back to the drawing and we're going to create uh, each of the views. So there's the front view and I'm going to go with third angle projection and I'm going to make it a custom scale. I'm going to make the scale a bit bigger. I'm going to go to a four to one scale and then I'm going to pick my view. So if that's that central view there and I want a view of the front and I want a view of the top. And if I wanted to, I could do a view at the back, but I don't think I need it. I think those three views are going to show me everything that I need. So that's what we're going to go with. And we can space them out a bit more in the X. And we can space them out a bit more in the Y. Just to give us enough space to get our dimensions on. I'm going to apply that. Say OK. And now you can see one thing you can see here is there's a box around my view. And it tells you the name of the view. If you hit this um, no entry sign or whatever you want to call this guy, the stop sign, don't, whatever, it turns off the view frames, so that will turn those off. When they're on, you can also see you have each of these vertices has a dot on it, so you can pick it for dimensioning. So that's basically our shape. That's basically what we're going to do. In this one here, I want to see this hole. I want to see it as a hidden line. So I go over here. So I have my, if I open up my page with the uh, projection group, the front 
view is selected. You can see that by the fact that it's green over here. I'll go down to where it says hard hidden false, and I'm going to change that to hard hidden true. And then I'll tab away from that. And there you can see the whole depth is actually shown in there. Mine is a dotted line because I have it set up in my uh, settings. You can change those line types. Um, you can do that from over here. If you pick uh, this edit, change appearance of selected line. So you can select the line and then change its appearance. I'm not going to do that right now. We're just going to create a dimension drawing. So the first thing we want to be able to do is to dimension this in a way that makes sense. So I'm going to pick this line and I'm going to create a dimension there. Okay, so now I want to put a dimension in for the height. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select that vertex and I'm going to select that vertex. I'm holding down control to make sure I pick both. And then I select my dimension. Yeah, so you hold down control and you'll be able to select two vertices. Now I want to uh, dimension this hole, so I'm going to select that circle and I'm going to give that a dimension. And once you've dimensioned it in tech drawer, you can actually just slide that around to wherever you want it. Um, and then I'm going to select this dimension across here so I can select this line and give that a dimension. And then I want to select the depth of that hole. So I'm going to select that. So now I have its depth. And then I'm going to select the center point. Let's zoom in over there so you can see. And this vertex. And that will give me a dimension to where that is. I'm going to select the center point again. And this vertex. And that'll give me that other dimension. I'm just going to move that over there. Now, remember, these are not constraints. These are actual dimensions. So these are what are going to show up on your drawing. So this is how you know what size it is as you're making it. And again, I'm, I can do a dimension across here. I could dimension the angle, I suppose. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension this line. So that gives me the beginning of that chamfer, and I'm going to dimension this line, and that'll give me the other side of it. And you can see it goes all the way across. So I have the overall width, the overall height, the overall thickness, or I should say length, height, width. I have the position of that hole, the diameter of that hole, I have where that chamfer is. I think from that I can actually do what I need to do and I'm going to turn off those boxes so you can see the dimensions. Now what I want to do is add a view. I'm going to add an isometric view. I go back into my model. I turn it into the isometric view that I want. And that's the view that I, I want on my drawing. So I'm going to take that, add a view. I have to select the pocket add a view and then I can just move that view let's turn these back on I can select that and move that view up here and now I'm going to tell it that that view scale is going to be my custom scale and I'm going to make that four to one as well there you go so I had to do a re uh, a refresh to get that to come up to that view size. So that's my isometric view. There's my dimensioned views. Let's turn those boxes off again. I think that looks fine. And there's a finished drawing. Now, one thing you'll notice is my dimensions are odd. So let's go back into our model and we'll change our dimensions and see what happens over here. We'll actually start constraining our model now. I would recommend if you're going to do this, I would recommend constraining the model before you actually do the dimensions but I wanted to do it this way to show you so we're going to go back into this sketch we're going to give this a dimension we'll make that 19 and we'll give this a dimension we'll round that off 10 
and then we'll dimension these parts. I'll call that nine. And we'll dimension from there to there. Call that five. And I'm going to dimension the same way that I have dimensioned the part on the drawing because we want to try and stick with those things uh, being the same. Otherwise, you can have some odd output. So I've rounded off all of these dimensions. Now, if I close that, I have my part. If I go back into my drawing, you'll see that all of these dimensions for the outside shape have all changed. And now what I'll do is I'll go into my sketch for my my uh, hole. I'll give that a dimension. I'll make that four. And I can dimension this just to lock it down. Point seven five looks good. And we're gonna do it that way. We got the wrong line, didn't get that piece there. So I'm going to give that a dimension, call that five, so it's in the middle. And now, if I close that, you'll see on my drawing my hole is now four, and the dimension is now five, and everything is the way it should be. So, I don't know what happened here, we lost a dimension there somehow. Let's reset that. There it goes. And again, now everything is reflecting the model. So these dimensions are parametric. They'll change with the model. And you don't want to change them manually. You want to leave them be what the model is. And that way you have the right dimensions. And as far as locating those dimensions, it's literally just to click on, move them around till you get them to where you want them to be and make a nice drawing. The other piece of this is you can add some notes. So for instance, if I wanted to remind myself of something, I might want to add a note that says um, something about my part. So I'm going to just go here, I hit this editor, and I can change my note. I can say, um, this part should be 3D printed. Say OK. There's my note. I'm going to just turn these boxes back on so I can select the right part. I can put my note wherever I want it to be. And actually, I could go back into my note. I'm just going to make that number one. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up if you can hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Lots of new videos coming in 2022. In the meantime, have a happy new year. And of course, consider jumping on our Patreon or, or becoming a member of the channel. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.